Welcome to Amusement Sparks. This is the Remodels and Renovation Special, the wrap-up of Season 1. We're going to be going through those first five parks and revisiting them, making any changes that we see fit. On this episode, I'll be having two different guests. They were on Episodes 3 and 4, so if you've heard those episodes, you've heard these guys before. But I'm going to be kind of splicing between the two interviews, so um, I apologize for any awkwardness that might occur from that. But, hey, you know, what are you going to do? My guest right now is Nick Robes. Hey, Nick, say hi. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> there you go. Excellent. You may remember that voice from our Scooby-Doo episode. Um, Nick seems to be the Internet's Scooby-Doo expert of the moment. Uh, <laughs> the podcast, you're on, you're on all kinds of podcasts representing Scooby-Doo. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I show up every now and then. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. You're you're definitely crossing over into a bunch of other podcasts that I listen to. So it's been pretty exciting. Like there he is again. He's showing up. I I do take pride in being the only American Scooby Doo podcast. That is so cool, and I think unusual because <laughs> I feel like there are so many podcasters out there, but they're almost all just doing video games. You know, it's also interesting. I uh, I I started watching Westworld. Yeah. Which, you know, obviously everybody immediately got into Westworld. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I mean, I'm sure somebody's done a Westworld podcast, but let me just look it up and see. In three episodes of that show, yeah. there were 28 Westworld podcasts. Oh, my God. What? That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. I mean, the Internet is a glorious thing. It is a mysterious and magical thing. It's infinitely huge and then infinitely small at the same time. It's so weird. Yes. And uh, so now to introduce you to my other guest. So, Peter, how might my listeners be familiar with your work? Um, what, I was on episode three of this podcast? Correct. It was the uh, Forgotten Realms. Yeah, and then I, I do a couple other podcasts as well. Uh, my main one is uh, what, Peter vs. Peter. It's a board games and video games podcast. Absolutely. And you were just telling me you started a, a, a new podcast since you started your first one. And this one sounds yeah. really appealing to me, too, but I haven't checked it out yet. Yeah, it's called a Amateur Movie Critics Podcast. It's just uh, me and my friend Red, and we just go over a different movie a week. That sounds awesome. I'll definitely have to check that out. Um, the first episode I ever recorded was on Nintendo Land. Um, I'm a huge fan of Nintendo, and that park focused on the first-party Nintendo properties, which those are the ones that were made by the company Nintendo, not just games for Nintendo systems. So I know that's kind of like a, I don't know, jargony thing for people who are not really into video games, but... Hyper-specific. <laughs> right, it's relatively specific. Although Nintendo, you could argue, is relatively a household name so well also nintendo kind of falls into one of those ballparks for me where it is very disney-esque because they mm -hmm. are very concerned with branding they're very hermetically sealed off from the other gaming systems have you read uh like console wars or uh the super mario history i've read or any console of wars things? yeah and yeah. i i subscribe to a um, retro magazine which is like a retro video games magazine and Main, oh, word. Most of the podcasts I listen to are about old video games and video game history. In fact, I teach a workshop at my school about video game history. <laughs> no so, way! Yeah, dude, it's awesome. My school is, is legit. It's, it's a really fun class, but I love the history of video games. Welcome to Nintendo Land. Peach's Castle serves as the hub of this park, with pathways to Super Mario World, Hyrule, and Donkey Kong Country. Thrills include a Donkey Kong minecart, Star Fox and F-Zero coasters with a Wind Waker water ride. If you're seeking more interaction, you'll love the Metroid and Star Fox dark rides. Meet your favorite Nintendo characters and watch them interact in new and exciting ways. Attractions include a Yoshi merry-go-round, Mario mini golf, Luigi's Mansion haunted house, Splatoon vs. Super Mario Sunshine paint and water gun arena, Zora water park, and the Animal Crossing Village. Play carnival-style games in Wario's Warehouse and Mario Party Place to win Kirby hats. Throughout the park, enjoy your various top-notch playgrounds based on Super Mario World and giant-sized toys to make you feel like a Pikmin. So, but I mean, like Donkey Kong Country, mm -hmm. so you have 
his bananas are always stolen. Yes, that's true. He's always right. trying to collect those bananas, just like Mario's trying to get coins and Sonic is trying to get rings. They've got their, you know, their, they need got to get their fix or whatever. So within the park, would these be interchangeable or would you have to pick? Hmm. Would you have to pick which one you want to get that day? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So is it like you're you're trying to find as many bananas as you can when you're there? Like that kind of a thing? Yeah. And then bananas are what you have. Yeah. And then you have to go for coins they if could you want be, coins. I like that idea. And they could be just separate um, sec- separate goals you're trying to get. Like, you know, get 100 bananas to get this reward. Get 100 coins to get that reward. And they can be... Yeah. Maybe they're both found throughout the whole park, potentially. Almost like a... Like a Tickets at an arcade. Yeah. You know? Oh, that's cool. And I don't know. It could be maybe like uh, they could be little images, like little stickers hidden on stuff, almost like a graffiti kind of thing or like wheat pasting where an artist will just like hide something kind of subtly, you know, like on an overpass or whatever. And you'll have to kind of keep your eyes peeled to find those those little things, almost like hidden Mickeys at Disney World. Um, yeah. Where they've kind of subtly hidden them. I'm a big fan of the digital age. I, I oh, say yeah. we do this this virtually yeah, somehow. Yeah, well, you'll think a smartphone maybe and like uh, – it could be an augmented reality thing. Like, uh, I don't know if you've played Pokemon Go, but, you know, it kind of uses your camera's image that it's capturing as the background and then overlays some kind of, you know, three-dimensional computer-generated image over the front of it. So it could be like that. Like, you hold your camera up to this trash can, and then there's just a banana floating on top of it, and you've collected the one banana. Or your coin, or yeah. I, I don't know what the Hyrule version would be. Um, rupees, which are these, they kind of oh, look okay. like gemstones, but those are their, their currency. I, I hadn't even thought about that, but true, we should have those How three could currency. I ever forget? Ba-na-na-na. <laughs> yeah, it's such a nice sound. That's one of those games. I, I always remember the, the Super Nintendo version. Mm-hmm. I, I played that for hours on end. Yeah. I, I love that series. Just the, the freedom of it and the, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of like, mystery in those especially in the early games where they were first like figuring out to make this game not an arcade experience but an actual like long thing that tells a story that you're going to play for more than one day because like arcade Mm. games you kind of do the same thing every day and just try to get a little bit farther but then once they start implementing a save system like i can save my progress and then they started you know putting in secret little hidden things all over the place and um just adding more complexity to the world and i really like that I really and like even that like the idea of revisiting a location. Yeah, once you've learned must a new have been skill, revolutionary. Absolutely, so true. And I, this is like I have never really talked about math teaching on this podcast, but it keeps coming up this episode for some reason. Um, I, like I, I set up my algebra two class last year where it was based on Legend of Zelda, so um, each unit was one screen of the map. <laughs> Once you learn that unit, there's like certain parts of the room that you can't get through because you don't know how to like blast open holes in the wall or whatever. So you just go sure. to the next unit and then maybe one more unit after that, you figure out like, oh, that's how you use bombs. Like you learn about bombs after you pass this one quiz. And then you can backtrack back to that first unit, use the bomb there, and then get into this next cave system. But it was basically just a physical Legend of Zelda map based on the curriculum map. And it was like, oh, you have to learn this skill first, and then you can go back to these old types of problems and use the new skill to solve them faster. And it was like, this matches up with Legend of Zelda. I'm so excited to be able to use this in school. And I mean, I think math and video games are both pretty nerdy subjects. So they go, they pair well pretty well together. (laughs) For sure. I love the the collecting currency thing. That sounds really fun. And it would be a cool um, incentive to just, you know, kind of pay attention to what, what you're doing and keep your eyes peeled for these, these hidden little things all over the place and it's another one of those things where you you can opt in Mm -hmm. right like you can do it or i mean if you don't do it no skin off your back right you don't do it and you know maybe it's not even something it's not like there's uh experiences that you can't get like they're exclusive to people who have 100 of this one currency but maybe it Mm -hmm. replaces um like it counts as a token in the arcade or something like that like it gives you something that you could pay money for for a discounted price or for free once you've completed this challenge and I don't know exactly how the park would track that. I guess through your, your account on your, your smart device or whatever. Um, it just keeps like a running total of how many bananas you've collected. That's that's a fun thing to add. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. If there's like limited edition collectibles or, you know, collectibles mm-hmm. you can only get if you've uh, completed this little challenge, that, that'd be pretty fun. Koopa Shell beanbag chair. <laughs> Whoa. So it's it looks like this really hard, like, painful object but then you sit on it it's like ooh, this is crazy <laughs> <laughs> what was that sound <clears throat> oh man i just feel relaxed after even just hearing you relax like that 
Um, <laughs> something else I was thinking about with collectibles, um, mm. because I really love like Nintendo sound effects. Um, maybe you can unlock sound effects through completing certain things in the park, and then you can like set your ringtone to be that or whatever. Like if we if we're gonna have a smartphone app, you know, you get like you can earn wallpapers for your for your device, or you can earn like little sound effects or. There could be like little free things, like it doesn't cost cost us anything to deliver them, but they are mm. exclusives to people who have completed this one achievement. When I was listening to the episode, I didn't see a lot of like shows, mm-hmm. like Nintendo shows, which would like with the like range of characters that they have, like shows would be really great fit for Nintendo. Uh, so like, I definitely like uh, Fire Emblem, which is a game that I started playing recently would be a really good fit for, like, a 4D, like, 3D show. Mm-hmm. Just, like, Marth and all those characters going to war, fighting the forces of evil. You could throw in, like, water effects and fire effects in there, too. Oh, cool. I think it would just be, like, a really cool idea. Yeah, that seems like a really cool world. Um, th- There's so many different, like, really cool Nintendo characters, and that was, like, one of the first things that jumped to mind when we started recording that first episode was, like, they're going to be walk around characters from every single series because they have so many iconic character designs. And I think um, seeing them interact with each other, each other like in um, Super Smash Bros, is like something that's really got a lot of people more and more into <coughs> Nintendo. Is seeing like, well, what if there's kind of like a mashup or a crossover where you see these characters who would usually never coexist, you know, in the same exact space interacting with each other? And I think yeah. kind of doing that kind of thing in person would be amazing at the theme park if you can see you know, Kirby and, like, Captain Falcon, like, hanging out together, and they kind of do, like, some scripted interactions with each other, or, like, stage shows, or, like you said, 3D or 4D theater um, experiences would be really cool, and and the ability to either focus on the story within one world, which might be more cohesive, or a kind of, um, you know, Smash Bros-esque uh, crossover event, where there's characters from these different worlds interacting with each other in the same, in the same you know, story i think that'd be really exciting as well yeah well i definitely have here my second show that i like planned up who was a smash brothers stage show oh like, man in front of peach's castle uh-huh. and like all the characters will like fight each other it'll be a huge like scripted like combat thing but with like real real life characters yeah i think that'd be really awesome oh that uh, sounds great and like another cool thing that they could do is like have different outcomes each time because no no game is the same like no match of smash brothers is the same mm-hmm. so why not have like different outcomes for for each show that they do yeah that sounds awesome I, i'm starting to see this almost like a pro wrestling type event which i i'm really into pro <laughs> wrestling but just because when you play smash bros it's there's so much jumping involved like and the characters can jump you know 10 15 feet in the air in that game um or higher like it's just totally unrealistic so if you have human characters trying to act out these things it's going to be a lot more uh ground based a lot more terrestrial so I think it would be like you'd have to set up like, you know, a boxing ring kind of thing or a wrestling ring and kind of have them, you know, just like real, you know, wrestlers, how there's a, a performance arc that's kind of designed and they, they get to kind of like improv a little bit on top of that. But it's there are those big like scripted um, specific battle scenes that would be really cool to, to watch play out live in front of you and especially had a different outcome every time like. Man, that'd be because there's a reason to root for people in that situation. It's like my guy might win this time. You know, my favorite character might be the one coming out on top today. We'll see. That'd be awesome. And then I had had one other like thing planned. Mm-hmm. Have you ever Have you ever played Advanced Wars? Yes, I love that series, and um, I don't remember if we ended up. I think I edited it out, but um, I just love that series. The art style, um, is just really appealing to me for some reason. It's it's got really nice colors, um. And just the character designs are really cool. So I would love to do anything Advanced Wars. I couldn't manage to squeeze it in the original episode. What do you have? Okay, so there's a place called Disney Quest in uh, D- Disney Springs now. They used to be called Downtown Disney. Right. And they have these really cool bumper cars like themed to Buzz Lightyear where you shoot foam balls at the other bumper cars. So I was thinking, like, why don't – like, we could do the same thing, but instead of, like, just spaceships, do tanks oh. and have two teams – like fighting it out like in a little mini war wow that sounds really really fun oh man um there's actually this like really strange uh amusement park near where i live uh where my parents live rather um which is this really small town like there's no reason for a theme park to be there but it's kind of a theme park it started out as like mini golf i think and then they added go-karts and like i'm sure that happens in small towns across the country but they also have this tank 
uh, experience. You get in these tanks with uh, it's two people per tank. One person yeah. is is in the lower part and they're just driving it, and then the other person sits up like in a turret basically, and they get to turn around and fire tennis balls at the other tanks, and it's so much fun to like feel the tennis balls like thumping into the side of your tank as you're like trying to maneuver around to shoot at the other person. And you're you're sharing a tank with your teammate as well. So like you can talk back and forth really easily. Um, it's just a really cool like bonding experience. Having a two two person vehicle where one person is shooting, the other person's driving and you're kinda trying to work together to get the other people within your sights. Um, and the, the Advance Wars vehicle designs are yeah. just amazing. I don't know, for some reason I really like, you know, uh, machine designs, especially vehicles, but just the, the art style in that game goes so smoothly. Um, one of the things I wanted to add really bad was a uh, a part where we make console-shaped buildings. So, like, you know, the, Nintendo's got the regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, GameCube, uh, Wii, and Wii U. And those first four especially, those first four consoles, and I guess Game Boy, that Game Boy family as well, all those consoles have such a nice visual design where it's, like, really simple button layouts and just nice proportions and everything. I think it'd be so cool. So, like, maybe the building is shaped like a Nintendo 64, and where there are those four circular ports to plug the controllers in on the front, those are, like, doorways to get into, like, a, a strip mall. Like, each one of those is a separate storefront or something. That's so great. What would you do with the the new Switch, which is just, like, a <laughs> large tablet? <laughs> yeah, as I was listing those consoles, I was like, I should have stopped after GameCube. <laughs> You could probably put like a history of Nintendo inside of it. Yes, that would be so amazing. I was thinking, uh, um, I was literally thinking about that, having like a museum where you walk through and maybe they try to recreate the components um, of what it would actually look like. Like if you take apart a regular Nintendo, you know, where are the circuits? What does the interior of that look like? And then just blow that up so that it's big enough where humans can like walk through it. And then you can have little like a museum basically going through the history of Nintendo. Or even controllers, like if it looks like, you know, a Super Nintendo controller tipped up and then there's just a big cutout of the plus for the D-pad and like all the buttons are cutouts and you can just like climb through that and maybe it's a playground or something, like with some tubes going through it or whatever. That's it pretty sweet. Could be cool because they have some really iconic, you know, visually speaking designs, like their button layouts on their controllers and the shapes of their consoles themselves. Especially that is actually a crazy idea one. for a playground if you were inside like an old school gaming console yeah. and there were like, you know, circuit boards and stuff. I mean, everything obviously is is uh, uh, comfortable, like you can right. fall on it <laughs> or put foam or whatever, but uh, that would be like a crazy indoor playground. Yeah, that's a really neat idea because they have, if you've ever taken apart electronics, there's almost always like a long like ribbon connecting to the screen and that could be yes. a slide. That is a sweet idea. Um, yeah. Wow. You can climb up on some kind of like tubish kind of thing. I know yeah. there are no tubes in yeah. those, but there were like there were like uh uh pots. Right. right? Yeah, there's like there's yeah. items shaped that you could definitely turn that into like the you know, little chip system could be turned into it or interpreted as a playground. That sounds awesome. Because I knew I was gonna be doing the Pokemon episode as episode two, during mm -hmm. our Nintendo one I like didn't really talk about Pokemon very much, but um I think this would fit in better in Nintendo Land than in the Pokemon World Park would be to have a um, Pokemon Snap dark room ride where you're just on rails and you just kind of turn around and try to take pictures of these animatronic Pokemon that are going on around you. Because yeah, that, like the Buzz Lightyear shooting game or yeah, any of those. Yeah, exactly. Rides, like yeah. one of those where you get to to pivot, but you don't actually get to change your physical location through the ride. Like you're on, you're basically on It's a Small World and you just turn around trying to take really really high quality pictures of stuff. Um, as you're moving, which that's almost exactly what Pokemon Snap was, was right. you're on a track, you can't move except for the way it's making you move, and you just try to take the best pictures you can. So that could be pretty cool. Cause Some it's a, mother wrote in and was like, I think making animals fight each other is a little bit cruel. And they were like, how do we keep going? <laughs> <laughs> it is a really fun game too. But yeah, you're right. It's totally like 
a very peaceful it's almost like a national geographic game or something like i feel like that game when they first you know it wasn't originally a pokemon game it was just a photography game where you're just like oh. yeah i don't know if you're going through like the savannah or what but you're going through some scene taking pictures of stuff all around hmm. you and they're like you know what that could be pokemon why not let's let's put a pokemon skin on that and why stop at Pokemon? Just turn it into a franchise. Yeah. Uh, uh, make a Star Fox one where you're just flying through space, taking pictures of like planets <laughs> and stuff. And then if you do have that, if you have like this, maybe it's just one ride, the photography ride, and you get to pick, you know, what cartridge you want to put in. Um, you could use like the best photo that's been taken that day as like, you know, put it on the screens throughout the park or whatever. That'd be pretty cool. Like, yeah, you have like a pass holders uh, thing. You could have like a voting, a daily ooh, rank, yeah. a leaderboard. Oh, that's awesome. That sounds really cool. And you could even change the experiences. Like maybe, um, you know, each one basically is a computer simulation where you're playing the Pokemon ride. And on this one, this one level, the exact same Pokemon always spawn in the same place, but they all are kind of mm. like have artificial intelligence. So maybe one day you go in and Pikachu runs right up to you. And then the other day he like runs over to the beach. Or, like, they just kind of behave slightly different every time. And so then someone, like, takes this picture that would normally be impossible because it's, like, well, one time, you know, that Pokemon accidentally, like, got in the tracks and, like, stopped the ride vehicle. And then we got to take all these really crazy pictures. But that doesn't usually happen. So, like, leave a little, you know, organicness to it. Like, it's not always the exact same canned experience. Sometimes it unfolds differently. That'd be fun. And, And for the simulation, like, the actual ride itself, um, not too much would have to change, and especially if you're doing this in VR. It'd be really straightforward. Sit in this ride vehicle that's stationary, and it you just kind of turn around, and then through your VR goggles, it looks like everything's moving past you. Yeah, yeah and then the ne- the person next to you is playing, you know, a uh, uh, high rule snap. Yeah, and the guy yeah. on the other side of you is playing Star Fox. Snap. And that could be really disorienting, though. This one guy's like. Um, just like going through like a peaceful like lazy river kind of thing on Pokemon Snap, and then the other guy, there's like you know monsters chasing after him or whatever. Like someone's shooting flaming arrows at him in the the Zelda one. They're like, oh my god! And you're like, what? This is like a really chill. Like look at that Lapras, he's just chilling. This is great. I like the idea of being like a a, a star journalist in the Star Fox world. Like you're yeah. taking like battle photos, for right? Like... Because there's there's got to be journalism even in this you know sci-fi future of anthropomorphic animals yeah Yeah. they they gotta get their news somewhere you know 